Biology paper one in five minutes. If you have an exam coming up, do not stress. We have four topics to talk about in this video. Cell biology, organization, infection and response, and bioenergetics. So without wasting any time, let's get on to topic number one, cell biology. Now there are two main types of cells. We have eukaryotic cells and we have prokaryotic cells. Eukaryotic cells consist of plant cells and animal cells. And here is what they look like with all the labels that you need. I would recommend you look into a bit more about what each of these organelles do. And on the prokaryotic side, we have a bacterial cell, which looks exactly like this. Next, we have microscopes. The main thing you focus on at GCSE is light microscopes. There is an equation, magnification equals image size over actual size, and you can remember it like this. And it's also useful to know the advantages and disadvantages of light microscopes and electron microscopes. You can see, for example, that light microscopes are easy to use and cheap. However, the magnification and resolution on an electron microscope is far better. Stem cells and specialised cells. A stem cell is an undifferentiated cell. All that means is that it is just a cell that has potential to transform into a specialised cell. Specialised cells consist of nerve cells, sperm cells, egg cells, brain cells, muscle cells. The list goes on. Each of those things are adapted to do a certain function. Here are a couple, just as an example. Next, we move on to cell division, or specifically mitosis. Mitosis describes the process from one cell dividing into two identical daughter cells, as shown in this diagram. Mitosis is used everywhere in our world, and one example of this is in the roots and shoots of a plant, so that is where the growth happens. And the final part of cell biology is diffusion, osmosis, and active transport. It is really important you know the definitions for each of these, with diffusion and osmosis being the movement from a high concentration to a low concentration, and active transport being an active process as it moves it from a low concentration to a high concentration. Topic number two, organisation. First of all, in organisation, we have the idea that cells make up tissues, tissues make up organs, and organs make up organ systems. Within the digestive system, there are lots of enzymes. The most important things with enzymes to know about is the lock and key model or the lock and key theory you may know it as. And some examples of enzymes within your digestive system, we have protease, carbohydrates and lipase or lipase, however you want to say it. It is really important you remember those three. Next, we have the digestive system. So when you eat food, how does it go through your body? What is the process? So the digestive system starts off in your mouth, goes down your esophagus, into your stomach, into your small intestine, then your large intestine, and then your rectum where the waste food is stored. Throughout this process, there are a whole load of other organs involved, as you can see in this diagram. So I would definitely recommend looking into that if you're not already familiar with it. Moving away from the digestive system, we have the different food tests that you need to know. Next, we have the circulatory system, which is the heart and the blood. Your heart has four chambers, the left and right atriums and the left and right ventricles. Within this, there are four connecting blood vessels, as you can see in the diagram here. It is important to note that the left side is actually the right side, and the right side is actually the left side. There are three main blood vessels. We have the artery, the vein, and the capillary. And here are some properties of each of them to help you remember. And finally, within organization, we have plant organization. So plant organization involves the structure of a leaf. So pause it here if you want to have a little read of this. And also the xylem and the phloem. The xylem is where water is transported from the roots up into the rest of the plant for a process called transpiration. And the phloem is where food is transported up and down the plant through the phloem through a process called translocation. Our third topic is infection and response. First of all, a communicable disease is just a disease that can be spread between people. There are four main pathogen types that could be a communicable disease, bacteria, protists, fungi, and virus. These different pathogens can be spread through air, direct contact, or water mainly. It is always useful to know an example of each of these pathogens to talk about in your exams. There are many ways to prevent disease from spreading between people. Some of these ways are staying hygienic, so washing your hands, self-isolation if you have a disease, being vaccinated can also help prevent disease, as well as a couple others. Let's say you were to get the disease, your body has many ways of fighting against that disease. The best way to explain this is through the three main lines of defence we have. The first line of defence is through the physical barriers that we have. These consist of your skin, hairs, mucus. Stomach acid is also considered a first line of defence, even though it's more inside your body. And for those of you doing triple or higher, 
A good one to know about is lysozymes, which is an enzyme in your tears that also help kill off bacteria. The second line of defense is a process your white blood cells complete called phagocytosis. This is where your third line of defense comes in. This is called your lymphocytes. Your lymphocytes make antibodies and memory cells so that if that pathogen enters your bloodstream again, you can quickly make those antibodies and fight it off immediately. This is also how a vaccine works, and I would recommend you spend time learning the four marker that is how does a vaccine work, because it comes up almost every year. And finally, within this topic, we have drug development. Drug development is basically just a process that a new drug has to go through to make sure it is safe for people to use. It does this by going through three phases. Once it's passed all these tests and everyone is happy, that drug is then allowed to be put out to the general public or prescriptions and stuff like that. Topic number four is bioenergetics. All this is basically is photosynthesis and respiration. First of all, let's start off with photosynthesis. The most important thing with photosynthesis is the equation. Remember this as a minimum and you should be okay because you can use the equation to work out the factors that affect photosynthesis. For example, if a plant has more carbon dioxide and more water, most of the time it will be able to perform photosynthesis better at a quicker rate and for longer. However, it does also still need good temperatures, good sunlight and a good amount of chlorophyll within the plant. If one of these things is missing, it is often called a limiting factor and will hold back the rate of photosynthesis because it cannot happen without all five of those things. Respiration, on the other hand, is the equation, but reversed. Respiration is what we do on a day-to-day -day basis, and this is specifically aerobic respiration. So it requires glucose and oxygen and will return carbon dioxide and water. The definition of metabolism is something useful to know. So metabolism is just the sum of all the chemical reactions that happen in your body. Our final two little bits, we have aerobic and anaerobic. So aerobic just means with oxygen, anaerobic means without oxygen. If you do anaerobic exercise, this often leads to oxygen debt. Oxygen debt is basically a way of your body repaying the oxygen after your body has performed anaerobic respiration. That sums up all of biology topic one. If you have any questions, let me know down below. Good luck on your exams, and I hope this helped.